Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here's your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is the Ukraine Logistics Coalition with my friend, Ben Gordon. How's it going, Ben? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? Very good, very good. Normally, when I've had Ben, I had Ben on my podcast once before, it was... uh, to discuss five trends shaping logistics, and that was great. Unfortunately, today's topic is a little more dangerous, horrific, tragic, and urgent. So, Ben, please introduce yourself and your company, and then tell us what you guys are up to. Sure. So, Joe, I'm, for for your listeners' benefit, Ben Gordon, the managing partner of Cambridge Capital, and we invest in companies in logistics and supply chain technology. And Throughout most of my career, I've I've been involved in building businesses. I founded five companies in this arena, built an investment bank called BGSA, built Cambridge Capital. And over the last three years, we've invested in six outstanding logistics and technology companies. But on February 24th, everything changed for me because that was the day that Russia invaded Ukraine, started a massive bombing campaign against civilian and other targets. And it became clear that this was no longer just a, a normal day of business, but this was really about doing something to address this disaster. And my opinion is that those of us in the supply chain world have a unique opportunity to use our knowledge, talents, capabilities, and networks in order to be able to help. And so what I've been focused on for the last 16 days has been exactly that, trying to put together a coalition of other logistics leaders and resources in order to help the people of Ukraine. Yep. So who was involved with this project? I know you sent me a note on it last night and I looked at it and I was like, all right, it seems like it's an evolving list. But so uh, what's who's involved and what are you guys actually doing? Yeah, well, it is an evolving list because this has really just started to come together in the last few days. The, the idea is to put together CEOs of major transportation and logistics companies who can contribute their company's resources in order to help people on the ground in need in and refugees out of Ukraine. Number two, to provide technology like a freight marketplace that makes it easy and free for nonprofits to coordinate bringing in resources for groups on the ground to articulate what their needs are and for transportation companies to deliver them. And then Number three, of course, is money to, to bring in desperately needed money to fund all, all the all the activities. So that's the what. In terms of the who, it's evolving. As of right now, there are a handful of other leaders of major transportation companies that have stepped up. I spent this week in New York, D.C. and Atlanta. In Atlanta, Americold is going to be stepping up, which is great. We're talking about the ability to use Americold's temperature controlled warehouses in Poland, for example. Uh, as a staging ground for nice. the distribution of food and medicine, uh, which which uh, will be very valuable. In the global freight forwarding world, SECO uh, has stepped up and uh, really excited about the, the fantastic work that, that they have already begun doing, A, in coordinating transportation, B, paying for it. And SECO, of course, is a freight forwarder, not, not an air cargo company. So that means that they are either paying with their own money or they're working to convince Airlines like Delta United and other to contribute free uh, free lift in order to help with with delivery. UPS, we're in discussions with them. Flexport, which is offered to help. There, there, there's a long list of others that that I would li- love to see step up. But those are some of the key people and leaders at this stage. And then in addition to that, on the technology side, so I just talked uh, with Jet McCandless from Project Forty Four about contributing technology to be able to help with tracking of shipments and, and other such resources. And what I would like to do and would would love the help from the, the many fantastic people that, that constitute your audience is, number one, to help get more major transportation companies, particularly on the air freight side, but also warehousing and trucking. On the U.S. side, yes, but also the European side, and in particular in the markets that are adjacent to Ukraine. So Poland, 
Romania, Hungary, those markets, uh, we need trucking capacity to be able to bring goods in, warehouses as staging grounds. And then, of course, the ability to go into Ukraine as well, which may ultimately and, and simply involve companies that specialize in Ukraine. And we have some of those, but, but need much more. So number one, would love to find more great companies and CEOs that can contribute trucking, warehousing, and air capacity, particularly in Europe and into Europe and ultimately into Ukraine. And then secondly, we also are looking for leaders with experience coordinating global supply chains. And, you know, it would be fantastic to have a, a, a general or a former CEO of a, a FedEx or a UPS or, or another leader with experience putting global supply chain networks together. And then lastly, of course, is money. We've raised $2 million in the last two weeks from generous Whoa, donors. Very nice. Health. And that's great, but it's a tiny fraction of the need on the ground. Oh, yeah. We have millions of people. And this, by the way, this is all humanitarian aid. They're not getting involved in any war effort here as much. I, I'm sure we'd all fall on the, the Ukraine side, but the point is there's there's millions of people leaving the Ukraine. It's what, 45, 50 million people in that country? Of, and they're flowing into into countries that were not prepared for this. One other thing, Ben, you didn't mention this, but I'll mention this. I don't normally ask people, please share my stuff, please share my stuff. But in this case, I'm going to ask you, if you can't contribute help or money, please share this. Sp spread the word. This is obviously a fantastic cause. And we just need to connect with the right people, as always. <laughs> so so how can how can my listeners get involved? What would you what would be their the ask? Well, I think three things they can do. One is to, to the audience, if you are involved with transportation companies or supply chain companies that can contribute in any of the ways that I've described, contributing trucking, warehousing, air, or otherwise in Europe or to Europe uh, and ultimately to Ukraine, please reach out to me. You can email me, ben at cambridgecapital.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn, you know, Benjamin Gordon, Cambridge Capital. I'm the only Benjamin Gordon of Cambridge Capital. Right. And and reach out to me if you can help with, with that. Number two is, look, if you've got the capacity to donate ur urgent food and medical supplies, same thing. And then number three, the easiest and probably most valuable uh, in the end, because it's fungible, is money. Uh, donate. And you can donate in several ways. Uh, I'm working closely with multiple outstanding nonprofits that are on the ground. The one that I know the best because I've been on the board for several years is the JDC, the Joint Distribution Committee. The website is www.jdc.org. JDC for more than a century since 1914 has been a global humanitarian organization, has had people on the ground in Ukraine, Russia, and the surrounding area for most of that time, and has been providing vital distribution of food, medicine, and other supplies, taking care of people who are old, sick, disabled, or otherwise vulnerable. At a time when right now, most of us are trying to get people out, the JDC, and I can't overstate this enough, their staff has the courage on the ground to be going in and not out into war zones, into Mariupol, in, into the, the, the many town cities that are under siege by the Russian military right now. And so they need our help. They need our support and, and money. JDC, by the way, is the largest American Jewish humanitarian organization, but it also does non-sectarian work, helping everybody in, in need in the region. And so they, they've done a great job, and I'm, I'm you know, proud to support them. Uh, secondly, there's an organization called Project Dynamo, and Project Dynamo got started to evacuate American citizens from Afghanistan last year. They're now doing the same thing in Ukraine and now helping not just Americans, but everybody. That was co-founded by Brad Cohen, who's a, a wonderful entrepreneur and leader and like me, a member of YPO, Young Presidents Organization. And he has a co-founder with, with a military background who has been willing and able to be on the ground doing the dangerous work of evacuating people, putting them on buses and getting them out. We've had I don't know, I think uh, more than 20 such buses getting people out in just the, the, la the last week or so. And money to Project Dynamo pays for more buses, more drivers, and, and, and the ability to, to evacuate more people. Third, there are a host of other terrific groups I haven't personally worked closely with, but you know, the, the International Rescue Committee, uh, International Red Cross, 
Samaritan's Purse, et, et cetera. So, but I can, I can vouch personally for the two that I've been working closely with over the last, right. well, two weeks with Dynamo and, and many years for, for JDC. And they, they all need our help and the people of Ukraine need our help. Yep. Ben, before we hit record, I said it and it's the truth. I think the last two weeks, many of us have been watching TV, feeling helpless, feeling just like, why doesn't somebody do something? Anytime you find yourself saying, why doesn't somebody do something? It's usually that's a cue that you should be doing something. So uh, it's always watch the helpers. This is what gives you, it gives us hope for humanity to see people like uh, the coalition pull together and actually do something rather than just sit home and think this is awful. Because obviously we all think it's awful, but something needs to be done and it needs to be done by us. <laughs> Well, Joe, I, I would just add thank you. I would add one one thing to that, which is those of us in supply chain, we're in a position to really make a difference. Right. I mean, because fundamentally, there are many layers to this. There is, of course, the, the military layer to Russia's brutal invasion of an of, a, of an innocent neighbor that did nothing to provoke these these right. attacks. There's a policy element. There are lots of other elements, but but you and I and our, and our friends in the supply chain world, we, we live in the world of getting things done. We live in the world of logistics and getting things done here is really all about getting people out, getting food and medicine and supplies in. And then, and this is particularly important, taking care of the long term. What happens after this? Because right. there are already 3 million refugees after just two weeks. Think about how many people, I mean, the 44 million people of Ukraine whose lives are being ruined, destroyed, what will happen to them? Will they 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 may all end up re, having to resettle in, in neighboring countries. And that really means an enormous supply chain undertaking for the people, for the country and more. And and, you know, we in America are privileged and 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 as are our friends in, in Europe and indeed most places in the world, we we have more resources than our parents or grandparents could have imagined from a financial standpoint, from a quality of life standpoint, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. And, and there's just one last thing that I want to say. And since so many religious organizations, Jewish, Christian, otherwise, have been involved in the humanitarian side, there's, there's a, a line from the Book of Esther. And when, when uh, Queen Esther is in a position to influence the, the, the king and, and stop the evil plot of, of Haman, and what happens? Mordechai says to Esther, maybe you have been put in this position of power for just this reason. I like exactly. to think that for you, for me, for our audience, whether we think about it this way or not, we are all in a position of power and influence. Let's use it for good. Yeah. And boy, just this is one of those situations where just a little bit from everybody helps. Ben, you and others are giving a lot of your time and money and effort. But if everybody listening just gives a little, it it, it matters because it adds up. And by the way, you, you mentioned the uh, refugees. Watching people on TV walking with children and old people with the shirt on their back and maybe a suitcase, that's that's desperate. Imagine if you had to leave your house right now with just that and walk 20 miles. Ugh, I mean, the, the, the food alone that they need, housing, just everything that's going to come. So I would also say that this will, this podcast, this video will be around for a little while, but I suspect the need's going to be around for a little while. Ben, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I know we're going to have some links we'll put in the show notes and those will probably evolve as we get more links. I'll put more links in those show notes. So Ben, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the lead on this. Uh, well, so many of you taking the lead on this. This the, the Again, it's the Ukraine Logistics Coalition. And what I'll do is I'll put all those links, all this information into the show notes. And again, if you can't, if you can't help, if you can't donate, please share and get the word out there. Because the more people who know about this, especially if you can get those connections in Poland. Oh, by the way, I just spoke to Paul from freight caviar. He's in Poland. Paul, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> you know, all your buddies in the Ukraine, they could use your help right now. Thank you very much, Ben. I really appreciate you taking the time for this important important uh, project. Joe, thank you. And, and to, to, to your audience, to, to the listeners, we, we all have an opportunity to make an impact here. And I hope, I hope all of you and all of us can step up and, and do what we can. Thank you so much, Ben. And thank all of you for listening to my podcast. Your support is very much appreciated. Until next time, onward and upward. 
You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.